Deputy Patrick O'Gallagher, two minutes. Uh, Kyle, at the outset, I would have to say, in no disrespect to the Minister of State, I'm extremely disappointed that Minister Bruton could not present himself to this House tonight. Uh, and he takes pride in the fact, normally, that he always takes his own uh, topicals. Uh, but there may be a genuine excuse. Now, had I known that, I would have uh, requested it for another day. In my county of Donegal, there are 17 post offices either closing or uh, due to close. Uh, and this is a result of a protocol that was presented to the government by Anne Post, and the government accepted that protocol. It relates to areas where uh, there are post offices with a population uh, under 500. But it wasn't a population. It was rural settlements. It was a deceitful way to have done this. They asked. Uh, there was no commercial analysis. Uh, there was no uh, economic analysis. There was no rural proofing. But it's OK for the people of Dublin to be two miles, two kilometres of post office. But what about the people of rural Ireland? As long as you have to walk or cycle or if there's public transport available, 15 kilometres. The people of rural Ireland, and particularly the people of my county, they have been conned by this government. I come in here with others. We voted unanimously on an amendment to provide a public service obligation for the, those rural areas. What has the government done? They've ignored it. I, together uh, with colleagues, went to meetings around the constituency, public meetings, committees were selected. They spent hours and days preparing submissions. Submissions to whom? submissions to reviewers that were appointed by Ann Post. What other decision would we expect from those reviewers? Uh, I know the name of one. Uh, I'm not questioning their integrity, but I believe it was only a box-ticking exercise, and as I said earlier, it was a deceitful way of dealing with the people uh, of rural Ireland. I went to the GPO together with my colleagues Darty and Pringle with bagfuls of submissions. We might as well have put a match to them in the middle of O'Connell Street because they had no effect whatsoever. However, it's not good enough that in post and the government have not accepted the will of this House, a unanimous decision, a unanimous decision by uh, this House, and they've totally, uh, totally ignored us. We're not prepared to accept this, Thank and they have conned the people of rural Ireland. Thank you for your cooperation. Deputy McGrath, two minutes. Well, Look, I too am very disappointed. When I welcome your reappointment, re Minister, and wish you well as junior minister, it's an insult that Minister Bruton is not here this evening. But we're insult after insult. Newcastle Save Our Post Office Committee uh, sent their appeal by registered post on the 26th of September 2018, and expected to hear, we're led to believe that there was a decision within 28 days. A committee member contacted on post on the 31st of October 18, and they still hadn't received any news about their appeal, and they were informed that uh, the case was currently with an independent assessor. Independent, my eye. I mean, this is a, a box ticking, as Deputy uh, Corporal Gallagher has said. The appeal was a comprehensive one, and as a to committee, after a huge public meeting in Newcastle, uh, substantial, uh, in a substantial way it tackled and addressed each item listed uh, in the protocol, with supporting <coughs> maps, photos, uh, uh, letters, and almost a thousand signatures from a small village in my, what I represent in, in South Tipperary and the Waterford border. And the appeal is set for seven pages long. And the, and the so-called independent committee hadn't the manners to contact them, hadn't the manners to acknowledge them, hadn't the manners to even uh, ring them. And we found out this morning where a local councillor got a letter. The committee themselves have got no letter as of yet saying their appeal was turned down. This is outrageous, Minister. You're back in power with your senior minister. Go back to your minister and tell him to put manners on this, these on post officials and the so-called independent uh, committee. The committee worked extremely hard, as I said, to put uh, together a substantial appeal, and they were, they, were, uh, they, were, they were answerable to the community, to a public meeting. It's a, a, a public process that we engaged on, and they have nothing to tell them. They haven't even got a letter. With all due respect, they haven't got a letter. I heard Kilmeadon Post Office in Waterford got it today as well. The closure, which is part of a dirty, filthy agreement that was reached between the Postmaster's Union, IPU, and Anpus, just another aspect of the unembarrassed contempt that you, uh, for rural Ireland that your government, that you chose to join again, Minister Kenny, has for the people of rural Ireland. Um, in April of this year, the IPU hyped up the outcome of the negotiation with post, an outcome that was allegedly all about maintaining the delivery of local post office services throughout the state. You're losing your own constituency, Minister, and you know it. Today we know that those words were absolutely meaningless. They don't care about the people. The so-called agreement included a £50 million investment package from Post Office Network, negotiated redundancy settlements, and was sold as snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. Where is the victory?
victory for our post office. Told to travel seven kilometres to add filling. If they don't have a care, if they're not able to drive, there's no taxi service, there's no bus service. This is an insult to rural Ireland. Rural proofing, my backside, there's no such thing as rural proofing Thank here. You. I mean, OK, I'll come back later. Yeah, I'll let you back in. Minister, you have four minutes. Thank you, Cahirlik. And uh, first of all, I welcome the opportunity to address um, you on this issue. And I want to apologise for Minister Bruton, who is not here to answer you. Uh, he, is all du uh, he has duplication of business, uh, and, and he asked me to take the, the, the uh, question for him, which I am uh, welcome the opportunity to do that. The government is committed to supporting the post office network that meets the needs of communities across the country, particularly in rural areas. A modernised post office network will provide a better range of financial services and e-commerce services for sharper small business as well as for government services. <coughs> we are all cognizant of the value and dedicated service that postmasters the length and breadth of this country have given to rural and urban communities. Across the country, post, uh, postmasters have taken the difficult decision in recent months to leave the business. It is important to bear in mind that this was a voluntary decision, and I am sure that decisions were not taken lightly. It is important that, that the decision of those who wish to leave the business is respected. The decision on whether to accept the package was solely one for individual postmasters. I do understand the concerns of older people and communities, and this is an anxious time for many of them. I just want to remind you that more than 500 post offices closed during the economic boom between 2002 and 2007, including 30 post offices in the deputies' uh, county of Donegal. No action was taken, and the post office network was allowed to fall into decline. No new investment or services were put in during that period. This government did not want that to continue. The postmasters of this country and the communities they serve deserve a clear future and a plan to be put in place for the development of an investment into the post office network and into its services. We now have set out a clear path and future for the post office network. Almost two years ago, we were presented with the future for on post and the post office network that was uncertain and extremely bleak. There was a very real possibility that the company would go under. The potential for a complete shutdown of postal services with the loss of thousands of jobs was undeniable. Immediate action was needed to ensure the survival of on post and the post office network. This was necessary to protect the thousands of jobs across the country, the 9,000 people working in on post. Two years later, critically important decisions have been made. On post have been stabilised because of the action that has been taken. The company is changing from a 19th century model to one that has relevance and can have resonance with the 21st century and rural and urban areas. There is widespread acceptance that the post office network requires modernisation to build, to maintain and to protect a service that meets the needs of communities across the country. On post renewed, renewed vision for the post office network centres on the availability of new services in a modernised, revitalised network. These services must include a better range of government services, financial services and e-commerce services for shoppers and small businesses. Investment of 50 million in the network by on post is based on getting communities to use the enhanced services that their local post office will provide through a modernised network. Key to future of the network will be the willingness of us all to use it. Essential in delivering on the renewed vision for the Post Office Network is the agreement reached by the Irish Postmasters Union, IPU. In its negotiations with Unpost, postmasters and postmistresses sought both the modernisation of the network and a voluntary redundancy package for those who wanted to leave the business. Talks were concluded between Unpost and the IPU in April this year, following three months of intensive negotiation. The, the agreement was subsequently endorsed by 80 per cent of the IPU members. An, an independent appeals process was put in place to enable communities to have a decision related to their local post office reviewed. In addition, any retailer in, the, in any of the locations of the 159 post offices can apply to one post to be considered to take over some or all of the services of the closing post office. If a, real, if a retailer looks to avail of services and if Unpost decides for one reason or another not to provide them, that decision can also be submitted for review to an independent process. 
The deadline for receipt of, of appeals under this process was the 31st of October. I've been uh, advised that 50 cases were submitted for review by closing date out of 159. Thank you, Minister. The, the rest of your file will be on the record, and you'll have a chance to come back in as well. Okay. Deputy, perhaps you can for one minute. And sure. then I, I know from the tone of Minister Ted Canny's speech that his heart isn't in it. He knows rural Ireland as well as I know rural Ireland. This here was prepared by and post and endorsed by the Department of Communications. And the one honest sentence that's in it, it was based on a voluntary redundancy package. That's what it was based on. Why wouldn't the uh, Post Office Union 80% uh, of it endorse them? Because it was in their interest. I'm not critical of those who accepted the redundancy package, but those who got it the, uh, and puts should have replaced the services there. It goes on in the next page to say that any, some of the services could be, or all of them, uh, could be provided in another retailer. And they have up until Wednesday, the 31st of October. How could you ask these people to run a business when decisions weren't taken until into November? November, and some won't be taken until December. How could you uh, make a submission in advance uh, of that? Uh, I think it's a very sad day. And if the minister is on a duplication of business, business, that means to me that whatever business he's on, this is less important. This to us is the most important business that's been discussed in this house today. And I think it's a total insult to us as deputies and a total insult to rural Ireland that they're doing uh, what they did. Thanks. It's just not good enough and we're not prepared to accept this. And we're looking for the minister to meet with uh, a representative cross-party group uh, of TDs to discuss the issues and Thank to discuss you. the protocols. Who appointed Deputy. these people? Deputy, Who appointed them? Thank and it's a box ticket. And I'm asking you, Mr Kenny, to confirm tonight that the Minister will meet a group of Thank you, rural Deputy. TDs. Thank you, Mr McGrath. Mr McGrath, I do, and first of all, Mr McGrath, is unbecoming of you, Minister. You know better yourself from your rural community that that's balderdash. This is a stinking, rotten stinking deal done by the IPU. Who gave the IPU any mandate to close post offices? To get an, uh, I want to salute all the postmasters and postmasters and even took the redundancy more power to them than I'm entitled to. First of all, park that. That didn't give the IPU the rights to negotiate away services for my village in Newcastle and Tipperary or the, or the other five villages in Tipperary that are losing their post offices. The Minister wouldn't even come in here. That's show you didn't stay in. I've written to the four Fianna Fáil TDs, Michael McGrath and the others, who are in, involved now in renegotiating the, the contracts and supply. If they care about rural Ireland, Fianna Fáil, with the government over there, they will make these post offices and they will disband this, uh, this uh, quango or, or this cabal, a so called independent inquiry that, in, in the manners of the respect, to write back to our committee in Newcastle, who put in a comprehensive reply, did, went about the work, work diligently and honestly. This is a cop out and it's Thank a disgrace that, that it should happen that way. No, I, I have a few more seconds. No, I, uh, uh, and, and I think it's disgraceful. And for you to come in, Minister, and accept that. Um, Sorry, now, Deputy, it, you're gone way They call this success. The Minister must act here. Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael must Thank act you, here Deputy. and keep these post offices open. If not, just call an election, go to the country, let the people be the decision. Thank not you. a cabal of so called independent Deputy. people with Deputy. a rotten, Deputy. stinking Sorry. deal that the union negotiated behind these backs. Deputy, they have please. No Deputy. Deputy. Please, please resume your seat. You know please resume your seat. I'm in the chair now. Please resume your seat. Minister, two minutes. Thank you, Lasky Horla. Um, first of all, going back to. Um, um, the uh, suggestion that I would make a commitment on behalf of the Minister, I can't do that, but I will actually uh, bring back to the Minister your request to meet with um, um, Nod Particle. Without interruption. Um, um, Please allow Minister Kenny to answer the question. And, and um, what I would say as well is that I am from rural Ireland, just at the outset, and I do understand uh, uh, it's happening in my own constituency. But I will say as well is that the post office has not been supported. And a lot of post offices have closed because they haven't been supported. So we, we, we have to talk, we have to talk about, about the, the facts of it. And it is the government's policy that the post office must remain strong, viable, and that the company be in a position to provide high quality nationwide postal services and that maintains a nationwide customer focused network of post offices in the community. Government remains fully committed to a sustainable post office network, which is key piece of economic and social infrastructure for both rural and urban areas. The postmasters of this country and the communities they serve deserve a clear future and a plan to be put in place for the development of and investment into the post office network and its services. Such actions are not taken by a series of governments over, over the decades. We're never done. <coughs> we have now set out a clear path and future for the post office network. 
the decision. Excuse me, Karen Corley. Yeah, I, 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 the decision I on whether to accept the voluntary redundancy yeah, package for one uh, was one for individual postmasters, and it is, it is important that these decisions are respected. Where a post office closes 70% of the business transferred to a neighbouring post office, the reality is that by facilitating those who wish to exit the business, neighbouring post offices will be further supported to ensuring a sustainable, a sustainable network. Innovation and change have been embraced, and new services will now meet the future needs. <coughs> Politically, it is our responsibility to lead that change, to strengthen the post office as a public company delivering a public service and to support the decisions required to translate the aspirations into effective action. Thank you. Please, thank you. Deputy De De McGrath, please. please. You know, but you, no, out of common courtesy, you must allow people to reply. You can